Okay, let's have a look at getting started with DSLR Remote Pro by running the setup wizard. Now the setup wizard is sort of a quick and easy way to get started, uh, but I think you get the most out of Breeze if you build something more customized towards your needs or needs of your clients. But you need to start somewhere and the setup wizard sort of helps you to lay the foundations and gives you a bit of an idea of how things are pieced together. But certainly I would see this as a starting point, not as your finished product. So let's jump into Breeze and see what we need to do to get up and running. Okay, so we have up the top here uh, an option for a shortcut for the Photo Booth Setup Wizard, which you can click, um, or you can come up to the File menu and down to Photo Booth Setup Wizard. Now, the first time you run it, you're going to be prompted to back up your settings, but since this is sort of the first time, uh, we don't need to do that, so we'll just say no. So we'll go ahead and give our event a name, so we'll put my first event and then we'll hit next. Now here's where we choose all the options that we want to configure for our photo booth. Um, so the main thing we want to start with here is the theme. Now the theme is sort of the look and feel and probably the most important aspect um, of setting up the photo booth. Uh, you can't get a preview of the themes within the setup wizard, but what you can do is have a look at the folder of assets that Breeze has for the, uh, the pre-made themes that come with uh, DSLR Remote Pro. So if we jump across to, uh, say, our desktop, and we just come down to our C drive, uh, and then to Program Files x86, uh, Breeze Sys, then DSLR Remote Pro, uh, we'll see a folder called Wizard. Now, here are all the folders of the different uh, themes that are available in the wizard. Uh, and you can jump into any of those folders and sort of have a peek at uh, the assets uh, that are part of that theme. And that will give you an idea of the sort of general vibe of it. So if we jump into, say, Miami Nights Landscape, we can see that it's sort of a black and white, sort of more clean, simple, modern sort of look. Uh, if we look at the Miami uh, Day, it's the same theme, but sort of just sort of done in opposite. It's uh, white icons instead of uh, the dark black ones. Uh, then we have, for example, Pop-O-Matic, uh, which is a more retro inspired theme. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the Miami Night theme, and then we'll run it again with the Pop-O-Matic theme. So you can sort of get a bit of an idea of how they look uh, in the software. So we will select uh, Miami Nights Landscape uh, full screen here. Now it is worth pointing out at this stage also that you might notice that there are landscape and vertical versions. And then for the landscape, there's often a full screen version as well. So basically just this just means that the vertical versions have been optimized for vertical screens. So maybe like a mirror booth, whereas the landscape versions have been optimized for uh, landscape screens. Uh, and the versions that have full screen after them are referring to uh, the live view configuration. So these ones tend to work better in conjunction when the live view is set to full screen. If, for example, you just want a square cropped live view, then you could um, quite happily just run one of the other standard landscape versions, no problem. So let's go ahead and select Miami Nights landscape full screen, and we're going to set the, the live view to full screen as well. Now also we need to configure the photo booth mode. So this is basically what sort of uh, session we're going to run. So we can set the photos only, photos or booms, uh, video uh, or uh, boomerang gifts only. So we're going to do uh, just photos only to keep it nice and simple in this demo. Uh, you can choose the button placement. So I think buttons generally look better across the bottom of the screen, but uh, you can also set it to be down the side. Uh, and that might look better if you have a vertical screen layout. Uh, most of the themes, you don't need to bother setting the background color or the text color as it'll be handled by the theme itself. Then you can go through and just select a few extra options here. So we're using a touch screen, so we'll set that. And we're going to allow users to select black and white or color filter options as well. And we want to give people a preview after each photo is taken. Uh, you can display a thumbnail um, as each photo is taken. I don't really like that option, so we're going to leave that off. And we're going to keep things nice and simple today and just do this demo by taking one single photo. So we don't want to make a slideshow GIF. Uh, but ordinarily, if you had it set to, say, take three photos, um, in addition to generating the print, um, you could also generate a three-photo GIF as well, and that all happens automatically. You can enable a display print confirmation screen, so that means after the, the photos are captured but before they're actually printed, uh, you can give people the option to accept or reject that. Um, and with some more advanced configuration, you can allow people to select the number of copies of prints they want as well. Uh, we're going to keep that off because I tend to like it just to automatically print.
Uh, then we have some sharing options. And for this example, we're just going to keep it nice and simple and just enable email sharing. So then we'll hit next and that'll take us to our print setting options. Now, uh, there's a bunch of pre preset uh, prints that you can choose from. Now, these are just exactly that, just sort of uh, pre-made templates. Uh, once you're up and running, you can uh, design your print layout any way you want, um, but it's easy just to pick one of these just to get started. So we're going to run with a single photo um, to get up and running. And of course, we'll just come up here and also select the printer that we're going to print with. So in this case, the DNP RX1. So once we've done that, we can press finish. Then that's go, going to go ahead and create all the screen assets for us. Now this window here is going to tell us where those screens have been saved and also where our photos are going to save once we take them. So if we jump across to our documents folder, uh, we'll see that we have a folder called photo booth images and we have one now called my first event. And in here are all the screens that have been designed by the setup wizard to get us up and running for our first event. So let's jump back into Breeze and we're going to hit the start photo booth button up here and it's going to take us into the Miami event that we just created or the Miami themed event and we can see we've got the color options and the black and white options down the bottom so we can touch on those to flick um, and then when we're ready to take our photos we just hit the go button and it'll count us down. Once the photo is taken it's going to give us a nice big full screen preview and then it's going to take us to the sharing screen. So we can then uh, click on email or tap on email and we've got an email address in to send it. Um, or if we're finished, we can just hit the red X button or eventually we'll time out and take us back to the start anyway. So that's a look at the Miami theme, um, but we want to go ahead and also run the Pop-O-Matic theme just to see uh, how you can get quite a different vibe uh, to your photo booth by changing the theme. So we'll tap in the top left hand corner up here to go back to the main screen of Breeze. And we'll hit our photo booth setup wizard button and we'll create a new event we'll just call it pop event now we'll keep all our settings exactly the same but we're just going to change the theme and we're going to select pop omatic landscape full screen and we'll just stick with all that and again it's going to tell us where it's saved all those screens so we'll come back to our documents folder and it's going to be in photo booth images and we'll now see the pop event and all our pop omatic uh, styled uh, screens and assets uh, while we're here, we'll just jump back to the photo booth images and we'll be able to see that it's created a dated folder where it saved the uh, photos that we just captured in that first test. So we can see our print layout here and the individual images here. But let's jump back into Breeze and run the Pop-O-Matic event to see what that looks like. So here we have Pop-O-Matic. So basically, uh, Pop-O-Matic's got a couple extra filters um, as part of it. So we've got uh, a sort of a toned black and white and we've got this sort of crazy sort of colored uh, retro pop style as well. Or we can go back to what we call a super tone, which is sort of like a retro color, color vibe. Um, I really like this black and white one, so I'm gonna run with that. But one of the great things about Breeze is that you can actually custom make all these color filters yourself. You can easily design them in Photoshop or Lightroom or any other sort of imaging editing tool, and you can import those into Breeze to be used. And then you can do all sorts of crazy things like this pop one, um, on this beautiful uh, sort of toned black and white. So let's run with that one. I'm going to give us the countdown. All right, so we've got our full screen preview of the toned black and white, and now we've got our print preview. Now, of course, we don't have any graphics or overlays or background um, on this print layout, um, but we'll cover off how to do that in a separate video. If we hit on the email button, we can see that the email screen's been... Um, uh, tweak to, to suit the problematic theme as well. So I'll exit out of that one. And when we're ready to go back to the start screen, we can hit the X to take us back. And so that's a look at how to run the setup wizard. So we've run the Miami theme and the problematic theme to give you a bit of an idea of the variation that you can get. Now, as I said, really the best thing you can do with Breeze is to use these setup wizard themes as sort of just a starting point. And then in a future video, we'll sort of deep dive into how to create something a lot more custom and something specific to your brand or the brands of the customers that you're working with. But as usual, if you have any questions, jump into the comments and let me know and be happy to chat further.